Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this 38mm Panda Mechanical Chronograph watch from Suges. I'm really liking this watch more than my Seagull 1963 with its champagne dial. If you do not mind the brand, I think this is one of the best value for money Panda Chronograph watch that you can get. It's a mechanical chronograph and not some cheap quartz chronograph. So let's start off with some dimensions of the watch here. The watch has a case diameter of about 37.3 millimeters. The lug to lug distance is about 47.1 millimeters. The thickness is 13.1 millimeters and it has an 18 millimeters lug width. Well, it's 17.9 here, but it's passed as an 18 millimeters lug width. The watch comes with an all polished watch case. Normally, I'm not a fan of fully polished watch case, but I think the finishing of this watch elevates the look and feel of the watch together with that black and white dial. The watch has an almost bezel-less design. So at 38 or 37 point something millimeters, I think it will not look too small even on a slightly bigger wrist. The chronograph pushers also adds to the size of the watch as well as the longer lug to lug distance. Protecting the dial is a dome sapphire crystal. I think there is some amount of anti-reflective coating on the underside as I'm seeing some bluish reflection here. The watch has a really great looking dial. It has a textured pearl white dial with a black ring on the outer edge. There are two black subdials. The dial on the 9 is the second dial, and the dial on the right or at 3 is the minute register for the chronograph function. The watch has applied hour markers in high polish finishing as well. The 12 and 6 are numerals. The handsets are also high polish with a red tip on the second hand and a star for the counterbalance of the second hand. There are loom on the hour and minute hands as well as those rectangular markers, but I would say they are, I don't know, just okay, maybe something good to have. So I wouldn't bother doing like a loom shot or anything on this. So before we turn the watch over, let's play around with the chronograph. Pressing the pusher at 2, we start the chronograph with a satisfying click. And pressing the same button again, we stop the chronograph. Pressing the button at 4 will reset it back to its original position. So this is, I would say, quite a simple, you know, you don't need like a fancy user manual to learn how to use the watch. And let's, let's say if it passed like one full round, I mean the second hand passed one full round of the watch, then um, the minute register will just tick once to indicate that it, uh, one minute has elapsed. The watch is powered by a Seagull ST1901 hand-wound mechanical movement. It has a power reserve of about 50 hours and beats at 21,600 beats per hour. Oh, before some clever dude comment that, you know, this is a Chinese copy, nope, it's not a copy. The Chinese purchased the design, the machineries to make this movement from Venus, I think in the late 50s. The only thing that dude can say is that, yeah this is a watch with a really old movement so um why not why don't we just wind up the watch fully wind up the watch and put it on a time grapher and see how it behaves well this is certainly a surprise it's running much better than an unregulated Seiko, um, you know, 7S26 or 4R35 or 4R36 movement. It's, you know, the beat uh, error is 0.2, but the accuracy, I think it's quite good at minus three seconds per day. So it's really a good, I don't know, value for money watch. You know, if you're paying like just this kind of amount, yeah, I'm gonna leave links to AliExpress. It's an affiliated link. Uh, for this money, you're getting this kind of handsome looking watch and yeah, it's quite a decent movement, right? Okay, it's not the most refined movement, but I think it's still a beauty to look at. This is a column wheel chronograph, which is supposedly 
superior than a cam type chronograph. Regardless, the combination of the blue screws, the pink jewels and the gold gears, I would say it makes the whole movement pleasant to look at, which is to me good enough. The watch originally came with a black leather strap, but it is too long for my 6 inch wrist. The leather is okay, but I cannot recall where I chuck it. I'm pairing it with this suede leather from Straps Co. The watch with its monochromatic look is a strap monster. It works well on a black leather, a brown leather, and on several different types of needle straps. So why don't we do a wrist shot? Okay, so this is how the watch look on my 6 inch or 15.2 centimeters wrist. With its slightly longer lug to lug distance, the watch really wears a little bigger than the dimensions which suggest. And yeah, coupled with that, you know, chronograph pushers, it doesn't look small for a 38 millimeter watch. But again, it's still okay on my wrist, you know. I mean, yeah, on the numbers, you have like 47 millimeters for the lug to lug, but because of that curvature, I think it's still okay on my small wrist. So again, if you don't mind the brand, this is, I would say, the best value and one of the most handsome looking chronograph watches that you can buy for now. And with that said, I think that's it for this video. If you're new to the channel, please help to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot. And you can also follow me on my Instagram at gfw underscore watch for more watch pictures. Till then, I'll catch you guys in the, in the next video. Bye-bye, take care and stay safe.